This is Bells and Whistles Sporting Association, IQ Boxing Training Solution, for Nando. Very special guest, a guy that doesn't need no introduction. Live from Matchroom Camp is Javier Miller himself. How's it going, Jack? All good. All good, man. Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. Welcome back to the UK. You know what? Obviously, it's been a long wait for you and Dylan, but even for us boxing fans, we're finally here. Fight week. How's yeah. it feel? Yeah, you know, I think it's... Uh, we need a big fight, that's for sure. Um, glad big time boxing is back. And I'm glad to be a part of it. So, yeah, it's all good. What was it like um, spending all that time with Dylan in Portugal, getting to know each other more and obviously having your fighters there, obviously Super, K, um, the newest member of IQ Boxing, John Arden Jr. How, how, how was that, having them... Um, having Dylan have them under his wing as well. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, um, I was working with Dylan for quite a while um, before we actually even, even, before I even went out to, to Portugal anyway. So we've always had a very good working relationship. Um, you know, as I said before, with boxing, we just seem to be, I think, uh, you know, we, uh, we like a lot of the same fighters. Um, you know, he's a student of his division. Uh, you know, his, uh, his knowledge is deep. Um, so we, I can I can have a proper boxing conversation with him, uh, and then we'll fling out we'll fly some names, we'll put some names out there, and then we we'll both just talk about their their fights and you know, even from early stages of their careers. So it's it's good, you know. So um, you know what I like about Dylan is this, it's he's very very easy to coach. You know, there's no I don't have to say things to him three four five times for him to get it. He just understands it. You know, we work on stuff, and the next day, boom, he's got it. So. It's been really good, really good. And um, to, obviously to have a, a Bremer, which is my heavyweight, was out there with me, helping me with Dillian. Um, you know, he's, he, he can he can take, you know, the impact. He's a big, he's a big unit. So he was helping with the pads and the body shield and so on. Um, you know, Yusuf Super Kamari was out there. I got him some sparring. Um, actually, Dillian organized sparring for him with a couple of guys uh, in Portugal, which is a really good experience for him. Um, he also did some training, some uh, strength conditioning training with um, Ruben. Who obviously work with the likes of Hay and so on. So um, you know, he's part of Dillian's camps. So that was great for Yusef. Good to catch up with John Harding Jr. again. Um, you know, uh Character. You know, he, was, he was on the last he was on the last show with um with uh K Prosper when he defended his English title and um Super was on there as well. Um I had I had some time to actually get to know John and I know him even better now and obviously I'm now his uh, head trainer as well. So it was a good. It, it's, it was good to have all of us out there. Um, Dillian brought a lot of people. You know, he had a lot of his camp was. Uh, I think we we're thinking about it today. It might have been between eighteen and twenty people was was out there throughout the camp. So he's taking this fight very very seriously. Uh, you know, he's invested in himself and um, yeah, smart guy, smart guy. He looks in the best shape of his life. I saw the video when Eddie Hearn saw him and said, "Your heart man, you was in Saudi." He's not kidding, and. Um, it just shows that you know that hard work in Portugal paid off because you know, like me, like thousands of fans follow him on Instagram. You see the the hard work he's putting in day in and day out. You know yourself and the team did a great job with him. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, Dillian to me is always in good shape for fights. The only fight he wasn't in good shape for was the fight against um, Wack, but we had like two three weeks notice. People have to be realistic. He, he took on a 10-round fight against a decent opponent and one night of the 10 rounds out of shape. That goes to show you his level. And um, he wanted to be busy. And if we think about it now, it was the best thing he did because it means that Povetkin and Dillian last boxed on the same show. So they both had the same amount of time out of the ring. If he hadn't got out that to, on that show, you know, he would have been out of the ring a long, long time. So smart again made the right choice. He seems to be doing that. He seems to do that a lot. Fighting the right kind of guys to get him in the position that he's in now. To some people, yes, it's a risk. To him, it's part of his development. He wants to be a great fighter. He wants to be a better fighter. Well, you've got to fight good calibre fighters to do that, you know, to get that experience. So, smart guy. 100%. 100%. What, is, what was the atmosphere today, obviously, with the first, first time he's seen Povetkin face-to-face since before lockdown. Um, so what, what was the atmosphere like? Um, is he ready to go? 
definitely I would with Dillian you don't need like no one needs to <laughs> to motivate him to be ready and charged up for battle. We we know his character. He's he is what you see. That's what I can tell people from being around him, you know, all this time. Isn't the cameras on or off, he's the same person. I think there's a respect line between Dillian and Povetkin, which is good. Um but you know when it's fight time you know he's ready to go it doesn't matter who's in front of him that's he's you know that that's a that's a victim that he's looking at and he's looking to get that scalp and that's exactly what we're going to do i wanted to ask you because a lot of fans on twitter was asking the question you, um i saw on camera you can see on camera there's a new set between the two but we were all wondering was there something said between the two that the fact that dillian didn't want it well eddie Hearn didn't want Dillian to stay in the same place as Povetkin got he's actually staying in the caravan right now is there a reason for that or it just be precautious i think some fighters you know obviously fight week listen it's it's war it's battle you know it's 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 time for it to go down i i personally if i was in his shoes i don't want to be seeing the same person at breakfast lunch dinner or walking around the gym walking, walking around yeah no, i don't want to you know as far as i'm concerned you're you know you're coming to try and take what i got you know, you have to have the right mindset for me. Again, it's the right decision. I believe so. I think I think it's, it's a smart anyway. You know Let's leave it to the ring on Saturday. Um, new addition to the team. Um, I don't know if it's permanent or was the news of David Coldwell. Um, was that Dillian's idea or did you guys discuss this? We had a conversation. Um, like I say, it's, it's, I think a lot of things are blown out of proportion. For people that understand and know the sport and are like historians of the sport, you should know that a lot of times you have two or three experienced coaches in the corner of a fight, especially a big fight. I'm a massive fan of, a massive fan of Evander Holyfield. You know, Holyfield's got the Duvers, he's got Georgie Benton. These are these are legends these are these are these are experienced guys you know um you know one person one coach might see something another coach might see something else and what we do as as coaches what we do we do discuss things during the round and that's what we do you know and um you know you might tap the coach on the shoulder and say listen did you see that or you know when he does this this happens it's good this listen it's a team effort that's why i said to everybody from, from the beginning i don't mind being associated with big names because I don't have that that type of ego, you know. I've been I've been around big fighters. I've been I've been involved in big fights, you know. I've always been a good a good team player, you know. I I know how this business works. And at the end of the day, the only person that really matters is Dillian. I'm making sure that Dillian's got what he needs in the corner come fight night. Now, if I feel that I need to ask anybody a question about anything, or because sometimes I'm watching my fighter, sometimes I'm watching the other boxer. If I'm watching the other boxer, normally, you know, nearly every fight I work with Nick. Me and Nick are head coaches for our, for our gym. But that's what me and Nick do. You know, one round I might watch the habits of a boxer. You know, then Nick might keep an eye on our boxer. So, to me, again, that's what you do as a team. Also, you never know what could happen. Dillian's had Magic in the corner for a long time, for quite a few fights. You know, Magic is his cut man. He's the guy that wraps his hand. Magic is one of the best in the business at what he does. I'm very good with cuts. I've been dealing with cuts throughout the amateurs since they removed the head guards. I've been doing it for years and I've been doing it throughout the pros. So let's say, for example, you do get two bad cuts. Me and Magic can deal with that. You know, then you've got another coach that might need to do something else. You know, it, to me, it's common sense. You know, it's common sense. All I requested was I would like another experienced person in the corner. I didn't name drop. I let Dillian decide who he felt was a good was a good pick. He came back to your name. Are you happy with that? I said yeah. To be honest, as long as it was somebody who I I respect, I was absolutely fine with it. And because you know my friend, well, my business partner and, and um, you know friend uh, Nick is getting married, so he's not going to be available this weekend. Or it's definitely obviously it's it's probably one of the first times I'm not going to have Nick with me, um, which is a bit of a shame, but. You know, we've got Dave Colwell, so it's great. Fantastic. No, it's a great choice. Great choice. It would have been great to see Nick there, but I'm a big fan of David Colwell. And um, 
will be a great great to see him in his corner as well. It, 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 listen, the, the thing is, this weekend is history. Well, all the match room events are in the back history. Much wood is never going to happen again. Obviously, we want this epidemic to go. We want to be back in the stadiums with the fans uh, back where they belong. But let's talk about the cards. I want I want to get your um, take on it. Yeah, start with, we'll start with um, a fight I'm looking forward to because uh, Jack Cullen, great talent. And Zach Kelly, how do you see this fight going? Um, I've seen, I've seen Jack Cullen, and I've only seen Zach Kelly. I think just highlights. I actually did. I actually met him and uh, and his dad uh, when I was training. Uh, which fighter was that? Jose Lopez, when he was getting ready to fight uh, Dion Juma, and he got injured. At a gym down in oh my god Guildford went to Guildford to get sparring he got injured down there and I met uh, yeah Zach and his dad down there so um but that fight against 50 50 fight I know Zach can hit uh, but Jack can also hit and Jack's been around they've both been around so and they've both take, taken gambles quite early in their career so 50 50 fight to me what's your prediction though I really couldn't pick Honest, that's me, me being honest. I really can pick. I, I don't, I don't know enough about both guys to make an honest pick. I know of them, but I don't know enough about them. So it would be unfair for me to do that. Okay, the next one after today's uh, press conference, <laughs> I wanted to ask you. Um, obviously, Robich, he's he's part of Dillian's team. He's one of his pro days. Is he the real deal? He's very, very good. I think what people, what a lot of people don't know and are going to get to know, obviously, in time because people are going to find out about him now. He has had an extensive amateur career. I think he has had about 100 amateur fights. So he's not just a guy who's come off the off the street and just decided to, to box. He's been around, um, been around good guys in Croatia. And uh, he comes here and he gives Dillian good work. I mean, he came down to Portugal for about four weeks and the sparring was intense. It was exactly what we needed. He got what he needed out of it. And I think he'd be well prepared for this fight. I think it's a big step up. It is a gamble. Yeah. But this current climate of boxing, most fighters are going to have to take gambles. And I think it's a smart gamble. He beats him. He gets his position. Don't know that much about Winters. I did watch the Parker fight today. He's got some skills. I don't know how much substance he's got. He'll be tested. They both will be tested, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I hope Savage can pull it off. But I like I, I like the guy a lot. I did a little bit. Of, I did a little bit of work with him while he was in Portugal because his trainer wasn't wasn't with him. So I you know helped him out here and there. But yeah, obviously I'm team white. So you know, let's go Savage. Is it safe to say the fight ain't going the distance? You know, I I honestly thought that uh, David Price and um, Allen was going to end in a knockout, and it went to points. They, well, it practically went to points anyway. They're like, no, I thought someone was going to get knocked out. It didn't happen. I think it was. Did um, Allen did he retire in his store, or did his corner retire him after yeah. about? 11? Yeah, but I thought definitely in about four or five rounds, someone was going to get knocked out. Um, boxing strange, isn't it? It's it looks that way, but we just don't know. But the way Savage approaches his fights, he's no nonsense. He's up in your face. He throws a lot of punches. He's heavy-handed. He's got a lot of heart. So um, I see the fight going about. Actually, I, find, I see the fight quite similar to what I watched today when he when he boxed um, when Winters boxed Parker. I see kind of a similar result. TKO went. Yeah. The one I'm forward to. Chris Congo. Lisa Clay. Um. You see in the distance again. Chris has been around a long time. Yeah, I you know I did a, a spell in the amateurs. I know of Chris Congo. I like him. I know him well. He um, also works with one of my um, one of my coaches, uh, Junior Sabo. Junior's been helping. They've been doing some work with him here and there. I really wanted to win this fight. He's he should really be an established name by now. I think he was ready to go a couple of years ago. Things haven't worked out the way he'd planned. 
I think it's a really good move that Dillian has picked him up. I think Dillian's got himself inherited a good fighter here. He can do, Chris can do everything. Luther Gray, I like the way he fights. Um, you know, he's come forward. No sense. No special effects. It's just, to me, just quite standard, but sometimes standard is good enough. But to me, Chris is a little bit too seasoned, a little bit too skilled. My only concern is how long Chris has been out of the ring. As long as Chris is sensible early, once he gets into a rhythm, I don't think Clay's going to get anywhere near him. So I see, I see Congo either winning on points or a very late stoppage. People who know that British boxing could have heard of Chris Congo. It's about time, you know, he's on, he's on that big stage, he's on TV. The prize has taken him this long. He should have been there earlier, but you know what? 16 months being out, maybe he could have been there sooner, but I'm happy for him. And what better, what better way to be matchroom on Dillian's undercards and the final uh, matchroom camp. And he show, now he could show everyone, even US fans, what he's about. Exactly. And, that, and, that's, and that's the important part. You know, you've waited so long to get here. You know, grab your opportunity with both hands. You know, it doesn't come around often. There's, there's a lot of fighters that, you know, are stuck on small hall shows that don't get the chance to get that TV exposure. When you do get it, you've got to show people something. You know, you've got to show that you belong there. And I think he can separate himself from this level and move on to the next. So I'm expecting a good performance from, from Chris. Yeah, I look forward to this fight. Rematch that everyone's been looking for. Um, I personally believe she lost at Madison Square Garden. Um, and I've been for the rematch for a long time. I was disappointed that I heard her soon it's going to go to the Olympics. Weren't going to go after Kate again. But you know, I'm so happy it happened. There's, for me, there isn't as much excitement as it was for the first fight. But how do you see this going? Similar to the first one? Yeah, boxing is it's kind of it can go two ways with rematches. Sometimes in the first fight, you're seeing exactly what it is we're going to see. But a lot of times, rematches, they end up, you get the same result as you did in the first fight. I see this this fight being quite similar. You know, it's it's going to be competitive. The only uh, pursuit, she just looks too easy to hit. Yeah, open. I, I like her. I like her aggression. I like her work rate. But if Katie Taylor is clever, you know she'll control that distance and uh, make her pay for coming in and just making sure she's not taking anything in return. If she can make that adjustment then, yeah, I think she, she runs away with it. The only problem is, I think, that once Pursuit gets close and gets a bit of success, um, she's going she's gonna to build on that. And that's what's going to make the fight, the, the fight so exciting. And the first one was great. I expect this one to be good. I don't know if Katie's got enough to put her away. She hit her with a lot of clean punches in the first one and didn't really seem to budge her too much. You never know. But it looks like it's going to be a similar type of fight. But I expect Katie Taylor to win. Yeah, she's never been a hitter. So mm -hmm. I, I don't expect her, for her to knock her out, to be honest. Katie wins, I can see it being um, on a UD. But personally, wins. I can see, I can see her winning on that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. so this, but it'll this, be a good this, fight. This, I, hope, I hope it's as exciting as the first one. That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. That's this. This is credit to, I think, the matches that we made so far with this this fight camp. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of 50 50 fights and there have been a lot of really good fights. The Cheeseman, Eggington, oh my goodness, I watched that live. Yeah. It was just that was brilliant. That was a brilliant fight, yeah. you know. Cheering Cheeseman on because, I, because I've met Cheeseman a couple of times. We go, I've been down to Matron quite a few times for sparring. You know, a couple of my guys have sparred Cheeseman, so you know, at least I've, I've met him. So I was really happy that he got it because I thought. I thought he'd been very unlucky the last 12, 24 months. I thought that he'd won his last fight. I thought he just nicked it. And uh, he got a draw at York Hall with, a, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, that was a very close fight as well. So um, he needed a bit of luck and he got it this time. But I think I think he just about earned it anyway. And hopefully he can move on from here. But yeah, you know, he gives, he gives everything in the ring. Uh, this, like, what's not to like about the achievement? Yeah, he's got yeah. a lot. He's got, he's got and he was, I, I, I remember him from I mean, he boxed, uh, I think, Fawaz in the, in the ABA finals. 
and that was a that was a great fight. So you know he's brought he's brought that that following that crowd with him up to the pros, and he, uh, you know he hasn't he hasn't disappointed. He's uh you know he he fights for his for his fans, and he's you know he's got a lot of heart. I like him. Before I move on to the fight that everyone's looking for, there's a couple of things I want to speak to you about. Obviously, we have BC rising Dilly, and if he wins again, again, we'll fight the winner of Fury Wilder. Funny, you, you mentioned this a couple of times. Boxing's a funny sport because I remember I kept getting fucked with it. Everyone kept talking about Wilder, AJ, you know, pushing Fury out of it. People already had Fury already lost against Wilder. And now all of a sudden, don't mention Wilder anymore. It's like they know 100% Fury's going to deal with Wilder and it's either going to be Fury versus AJ or Fury versus Dylan. But let's just say right now it's 100% it's going to be Dylan versus one of these two because he ain't you no know, no um, no money to, to back off or anything. He wants that shot. No way. So can you see Can you see how 100%? I see him getting a shot next year, yes. I can see it. And I, I hope he does. He deserves it. He deserves it. He's done everything that he needs to do to put himself in that position. And I think the fights that he's taken on over the last few years will have prepared him well for what's coming next year. But again, this is a difficult fight on Saturday. And I, every interview I've had, I've refused to speak about the Joshua's world of the world. It's just, to me, it's, it's just irrelevant at this moment in time. This fight's just too big. And too important, so yeah, just focus on looking. I know you said, um, I, I want to ask you a question on your own opinion, your opinion on something. Do you agree with Dylan on something that he thinks after dealing with Povetkin, Yuri, to avoid Dylan and go for that match fight against AJ, he'll vacate the WB belt and go after AJ's free belt just to get that big money payment at Wembley? fight for the free belts, and then if he wants, maybe fight the UBC. It's possible. Wouldn't be the first time it happened in boxing. It's possible. Anything's possible in boxing, especially in this current day and age of boxing. So, yeah, it could happen. But again, I'm just, it's just not even on my radar, this conversation at the moment. It's just, it's just, it's just too important. It's, too, it's just too big. So, I can't, I can't think about anything else but this fight. Is there a reason for this? Is Eddie Hearn trying to do something? Again, it's like I don't know what it is. You know, I don't know if it's if it's this current climate because you know boxing is just returning, but every single thing that comes up, it's just amplified and just blown all out of proportion. I've seen AJ ringside before when Dillian's boxed, even when he boxed Parker or even the rematch with Jazora. He was there. He was commentating. It's like this is normal. Why is this? A, why is this a big deal? I mean, it's worthwhile AJ coming out and, you know, it obviously adds value to the show to me. There's a massive name, world champion. Why not? It just makes, to me, it just makes sense. You know, regardless of why it's happening, to me, it just, me, to me, it makes sense. And if it makes sense, then, then it should be happening. You know, I like I think, the idea. I think in the past, because people are so used to someone's next opponent, let's bring sides and they're hoping then an announcement afterwards. We had that huge announcement when AJ beat, I don't remember who he beat, but Klitschko was right there, got in the ring, they announced it with AJ Klitschko. And many times in the US, a ringside, they come into the ring to come. And rumors always rumors. There's always going to be rumors. And there's that rumor, oh, AJ wants to confront Dil Dylan. I don't know why. He should be playing on Pulev. Um, to be honest, Dylan ain't even mandatory for any of these three belts. So that is true. And you're right. It adds value to the show. You know, AJ being there is a big name. Hash cow, as everyone says. So being there at the site, fire is already big enough. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's remember, this is a, this is a behind closed door event. I mean, we we need to bring, like attention to the sport again you know we need to build boxing again and it's just credit to dillian that he's actually taken on a fight of this magnitude on a show behind closed doors you know again you think what you think about his career thinking about keeping busy 
all these other things that have been introduced, like I say, they just don't mean anything to me. Don't affect me in any way whatsoever. If someone, another high-profile box has come in. Okay, it's fine. Let's talk about the main event. Easy opponent, former world champion. He's been knocked out once. I think he's only lost twice in his career. Hard puncher. The battle of the left hooks. It's, it's a big fight. And when it first got started, when it first got announced, I was so excited for this fight because I, this is the perfect opponent for Dylan. Just to show everyone what he what he's made of. And wait, when it got postponed, I, I don't know. I, I feel a bit hot. But I'm so glad it's back. I'm so glad. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight. You know, we've worked hard. It's been a long camp. I'm expecting a really good performance. It's going to be a very, very hard fight. Probably brutal at times. Yeah. And when is Dillian not in a good fight? He's always in a good fight. Exactly. That's, you can always guarantee Dillian is going to bring maximum violence. That's for sure. But I see a, a, I see a late, either a late stoppage or a points win. And I don't really care how it's on the W. Because it's obviously it. what it's on the line. I just need a W. I don't need, you know, what he's, I, I'm expecting him to look really good. Because I had a really good camp. But again, sometimes bringing things don't go the way you expect them to go. But Dillian, just by nature, just naturally, has that grit, that determination. And if it has to be a hard fight, has to be a rough fight, he can do that. So we've got plans A, B, C, D, whatever. And um, I'm just looking forward to the fight. You know, just looking forward to getting that victory. And then going home to my family. That's it. Thing is, with a fight like this, you know, everyone wants a knockout. Everyone wants to see that that KO. But part of me wants it to go the distance just to see Dylan's fitness level and him to showcase his boxing skill. Because a lot of people just think he he's just a, a puncher and that's it. But he's not. He's He's got skill in, he, in his locker as well. And I want to see that. And, uh, and the real boxing fans want to see that. So part of me... You know, I, as much as I would love to see a KO, um, but I want to, I want to see, I want to see his uh, skill, and I want it to last as long. My prediction is fifth round. I hope it goes past that. Yeah, it's not a bad prediction. You, you, you never know. It just we have to see how Povetkin reacts to getting hit with flush shots from Dillian. He got hit quite a lot against Hunter, but Hunter doesn't hit like Dillian. You know, but again, like you said earlier. He's had two losses and he's been stopped once in a long career. He can he knows how to fight tired. He knows how to recover from a shot. And like like I said, for the first three, four rounds, he was giving AJ a lot of problems. Yeah. Broke his until, nose. Until until AJ found that shot. So he's got a lot left. He also he also finished strong against Hunter, which shows me a lot because Hunter's a young fighter. Now, if he started slow, if it was the other way around and he started slowing down in the fight, then that's different. You can say, yeah, that could be an aging fighter. No, he was in there with the younger fighter and started to, you know, grab, grab a hold of the fight. It took him quite a few rounds, but he started to get up the fight. I was there, I watched it live. Um, so, yeah, I'm, he's, he's got a lot left. And in this day and age, especially heavyweights, they tend to go on for a lot longer. So, to me, he's not an old fighter. To me, he's an experienced fighter. And you can't buy experience. So that's why I'm expecting this to be a very, very hard fight for Dillian. And, but we prepared well. We prepared well. So I'm expecting big things. I think I speak for all boxing fans when I say I can't, we can't wait for it. It's been a long time coming and we can't wait for it. So hopefully after this, stadiums reopen, we get that big fight. Does Dillian, even though it doesn't matter, does Dillian care whether it's Fury or Wild, if it's in the US or UK? Obviously, obviously, deep down, he might want the UK, but does he really care? I, I don't know if he's discussed that during any interviews. I don't know. But again, I, I don't have this kind of conversation with him. He, Dillian knows that I'm no nonsense. You know, he knows my focus is this fight. He only talks to me about this fight. We don't talk about anything other than boxing. So he knows where I am. He knows how I think. He knows how I go about my work. I can't even like those. Honestly, it's this. This is why some guys, honestly, they get so close. That, you know, they're practically in, in touching distance 
of their goal and it just all goes horribly wrong because they're looking too far ahead. Yeah. You know, the dangerous guy, just focus on this guy. Don't worry about anything else. You've worked so hard to get here. You know, after the fight, anybody can ask me any questions about any of those guys, but right now, refuse to answer any of them. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, I do, it would be unprofessional of me anyway to do that anyway, to this day. As a That's coach, true. unprofessional. Shaz, I wish you, Dylan, and the whole team the best of luck on Saturday. Can't wait to speak to you afterwards. Only, only you guys could get me to step up this late to do an interview. That's that's love. That's thank love. you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, as always, as always, you guys supported us, so I want to thank you on behalf of Bells and Whistles. Thank you, Nick, and all of IQ for giving us the opportunity. Yeah, just a quick shout out again, again to my sponsors. Um, you know, Tiger Bay, Ealing Boards and Timbers, Bravos. You know, KMT, they've just, you know, what, what, what actually means a lot to me is that these guys, these companies actually came to see me early in my coaching career. And I spoke to them about where I intend to get to, what, what I want to do with my career. And they were sponsoring me from early. And for me to get here and the time they put into me, I, I've got nothing but respect for them because a lot of people talk about what they're going to do. Um, they didn't have to invest in me. They just believed in, in in my journey and they wanted to they wanted to be part of my journey. So respect to them. Anyway, I've got a really good relationship with all the guys down at Tiger Bay. His um, P, Oops, Sunet, and these guys have been amazing. And, um, you know, full respect to them. Shout out to them as well. Jad, let me just tell you on behalf of Bells and Whistles, we're proud of you on the level that you're at now and where you are right now. We always believed in you. So, again, good luck on Saturday to you and Dylan and the whole team. No problem. Take it easy. Take man. care. See you soon. See Take you care. soon. Take care.